Every day, I meet more and more people who are becoming excited about shooting film. But have you ever tried to develop your own role of black and white film? If not, it's not as hard as you'd think. I'm Nick Brandreth, the Historic Process Specialist at the George Eastman Museum. And whether this is your first time developing film or you just see a refresher, this video is going to outline the basic steps you need to get started developing your own black and white film. Before we can start talking about chemistry, we have to cover the most crucial step, which is getting the film out of our cassette and into our developing tank. Now why is this the most crucial step? Because this has to happen in total darkness. The reason it has to happen in total darkness is because our film is sensitive to red, green, and blue light. So any light could potentially ruin our film. Now, this takes a bit of practice, but let me demonstrate for you and you'll see how easy it is. For demonstration purposes, we're gonna keep the white lights on and we're gonna use some expired film. Using expired film with the lights on is a great way to practice. The first step we want to do is take our can opener, right, and we're just going to gently pry off the bottom of our cassette, okay? Then we're going to slide our cassette out, and you'll notice that we have a leader right here that we need to trim off. So we're going to take our scissors, and we're just going to trim that leader so we have a nice clean edge, okay? Just like that. Now notice how I hold the film. I keep the bulk of the film loaded in the palm of my hand, right, and I pinch with my thumb and forefinger on the end. Now you'll see that the cassette or the uh, film reel has a, a little clip here. So what we wanna do is we wanna take this and we wanna seat that right into that clip, just like that. I'm gonna put my finger here, right? And we're just gonna gently load that film onto our spool. Notice how I pinch and I kinda pull a little bit. So I'm pinching and pulling. Right, and you'll notice at the end here, okay, we got a little bit of tape. So you can just take this, snip that away, tuck that in, and we're ready to go. Remember, this first part takes practice. Take some expired film and keep the lights on. Practice loading your film onto your reel. The more comfortable you become, you can try closing your eyes. And eventually, you'll be ready to work in total darkness. But just remember, practice, practice, practice. That's the best way you're gonna get comfortable loading your film onto your reel, okay? Now, I'm gonna take some exposed film, turn off the lights, we're gonna load it onto our film reel, and we're gonna cover how to process this roll of film. Processing film breaks down into four major steps. Development, stop, fix, and wash. Let's review each step before we get started. Step one is development. This is how we get the images to appear on our film. Developers use chemicals like metal and hydroquinone to convert the light sensitive silver in your film back into little bits of metallic silver. All of your processing chemistry is going to come with detailed instructions on how to mix them. Step two, stop out. Very simple. Stop is a chemical that's used to end the development action on your film. Stop is often made from glacial acetic acid, which is a very strong vinegar. Stop bath can be a little bit smelly. Step three, fixer. Fixing removes the unused silver from your film. This makes sure the film is no longer sensitive to light, which means it's now permanent. After you've gone through your processing, it's important to wash your film thoroughly. There's a thin gelatin layer on the surface of your film, and it's important that we wash all the processing chemistry out of the film before we let it dry. In total darkness, I loaded the film into the developing tank. Now that the lightproof lid is on, it's okay to kick on my safe light so I can see what I'm doing. The film I'm going to process today is Kodak Tri-X. I exposed this at ISO 400. Now, according to the technical data provided by Kodak, I have to develop this for 6 minutes and 45 seconds at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. You can choose to use different developers with different films, but always check your technical data before you start developing. This processing tank holds about 250 milliliters worth of chemistry. 
I've measured out the necessary amount of developer, stop, and fix, and brought all three solutions to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So now we're ready to go ahead and start developing our film. We put six minutes and 45 seconds on the clock. We remove the top from the developing tank and we go ahead and we pour in our developing chemistry. Once all of the chemistry has been added to the tank, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna agitate constantly for one minute, just like this, for one minute straight. At the end of our minute, we're gonna go ahead and tap our tank to knock any bubbles off the surface of the film. And then we're gonna agitate for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Five seconds every 30 seconds until we're out of time. At the end of your development time, simply remove the lid and go ahead and return your processing chemistry back into your beaker. This can be reused later until it's completely exhausted. You're gonna follow the same step for the stop bath and the fixer. Here's the provided times you need for your development, stop, and fix. Once we're done processing, it's okay to go ahead and turn on your white light. We need to make sure to give the film a solid wash for about 10 to 15 minutes in cool running water. At the end of the wash time, we're ready to go ahead and inspect our film. And there you have it. We have images on our film. We need to go ahead and let this dry and then we'll be ready to scan or make prints from it. If you'd like to learn more, please visit us at eastman.org.